All right, guys, uh, still on vacation, and I've been radio silent for a little bit. And I don't know if you're going to be excited about this video, but I sure as heck am. So uh, I've been on vacation seeing a lot of friends, seeing a lot of family I haven't seen in a while. And uh, it, it, in this like sheer like coincidence of things, uh, the topic of Dave Matthews came up a lot uh, in, in my travels. Like, do I teach a lot of Dave Matthews? Do you like Dave Matthews? Uh, what's going on with Dave Matthews songs? And, um, and so I had to sit and like analyze Dave Matthews lines. And uh, I mean, Dave Matthews was like just coming out when I was starting my band or I was in bands that were just getting started and, and everyone was influenced by his playing. And so to learn about the Dave Matthews trick really is about uh, learning how to see deeper into your chords and, and about um, how to exploit the sounds that are inside of chords. Now, he is not the only one to use this. Um, very famous guitar lines use this trick all the time, but Dave Matthews is so like stylized um, in his playing that he uses this stuff all the time. It's what makes Dave Matthews Dave Matthews. Now, with that being said, you can use any of the stuff we're talking about to make anything in your song better. And that's the truth. Um, and I'll explain what's happening. Dave Matthews plays, he has chord progressions, but when you look at his lines, and he's super talented, when you look at his guitar playing, um, it looks like all these riffs being put together, and, and it's, it's super cool. But when you kind of take a step back, you can see what's happening. So we're going to dive right in with some like Dave Matthews talk, and then I'll show you how you can do this in other places and show you other guitar players that do this. But let's just start out with some simple Dave Matthews stuff. Um, one of his very popular songs is this song here. And when you and when you look at the tabs, you see you know two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, five, six, and that's all on the E and G. And then if you look at another one of his songs, uh, Trip and Billy's. stuff at a different pace and a lot of his songs have these chords in it so what's happening here in the Dave Matthews style is Dave Matthews um, first of all he likes writing in the key of D most of his songs are in D they're in D's G's A's uh, in there it's, it's probably where his vocal range is and why he likes it so much so when you look at what's happening in the key of D here um, like how does this work well uh, really the first chord is an F sharp minor and if you look in um, the key of D, the F sharp minor is the three chord. And I should have everything up right here, you know. Uh, F sharp minor. Uh, and if you look at these two notes, sorry, I'll raise my hand, like boom, boom. He's playing the root note and the minor third. Just the two pieces that give this chord the identity, root, minor, third. The second piece is, and what that is really is a G chord. It's the root and the major third. And so you can see right off the bat what he's doing is he's playing the roots and the thirds of the chord progressions that he likes. And, and this little switcheroo, usually when he plays minor, he plays minor with the middle finger on the root and the ring finger on the minor third. And then for major, switches the first finger to the root and keeps the uh, ring finger on the major third. He comes up here, and that is root and major third of the A chord. And then you'll see uh, him do up here, when you see this shape, you want to think minor, middle finger, ring finger, minor. This is the minor, B minor. And again, I'm not teaching how to play the song, I'm showing you, but if you look, you have F sharp minors, G majors, A majors, and B minors. And listen to how the song would have sounded if he just played it with the chords. It, it, would, it wouldn't sound like Dave Matthews. It would sound like someone trying to write a song and uh, the song hasn't hatched yet or, or gelled. And so his mindset is to go one step further and take the chords out and, and leave the pieces that are so important. And you see this in all of his playing. And so what I want to show you is he thinks about, and what you want to think about if you have a chord progression, uh, is you want to think about, well, can I take the whole chord out and can I leave behind the essence of the chord? And so one thing I, I did for one of my friends, again, is if you take this uh, chord progression, D major, now this is not a Dave Matthews song, it's a different song, whether you know it or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, if I take D major, A minor, C, and G. And some of you might know what the song is, but again, just, just think of this progression, A minor, and let's say you have a song that you write with this, but you want to make it sound a little more delicious. Well, okay, D, 
All right, so in its Dave, uh, Dave Matthews style, you'd find the D on the E string and the major third. All right, and then A minor, okay, you'd go to the fifth fret, and then there's the minor third. To a C, C major third, and then G major. And so if Dave Matthews were to like attack this progression, he'd probably be doing something like this. video. Can we just address that? Every video I messed up on, but whatever. So again, D major, A minor, C major, G major. So instead of, instead of strumming these chords out, you'd probably tack it with this. of Dave Matthewsing a song is about writing a chord progression that you like and putting in the roots and the thirds. Now, um, you can see this in all of his stuff, all of it. The whole like, uh, was it? Is that, if that's uh, <laughs> if that's ants marching, um, you know the this that is a, a root note in its major third. He's filled with the roots and the thirds. That's his sound, and mostly in the key of D for him. And so you want to be able to see your chords, know your cage chords, go go look at my videos about the major cage chord system and the minor cage chord system. Um, it'll help you see these notes a lot better. But let me show you some examples of other songs that have this, which is uh, the one that I thought of instantly is Tracy Chapman's Fast Car. You know, like... There it is right there on the E minor. Root and minor third. Now I, I know this is a different string, but when you look at the E minor, you have the root and the minor third. So this is going to help you start to realize where those roots and thirds are. And then, you know, if you don't like moving around, you can learn how to find those notes. Uh, really? And say, okay. And start. start to come um, more in terms of like melodies instead of chord progressions. This is what Ch uh, Tracy Chapman's song would sound like in just chord form. And the question is, could you listen to that, could you listen to that for four and a half minutes without getting bored? I don't know, but this one keeps the ear entertained. So the whole Dave Matthews effect is about taking chord progression and really just finding the roots and the major thirds. And you know, one of the most famous songs that does this, Blackbird. These are all these like, this is the root and the minor third. And so you can get some melodies from doing this type of stuff. So what is your homework here? Well, your homework is to, you know, take a simple chord progression, uh, anything that you like. It could have minor chords, could have major chords. Um, maybe you have a song that exists already, but you need something a little more spicy in it. Now, you're not going to make it sound like Dave Matthews because um, just doing this, people aren't going to be like, oh, it sounds like Dave Matthews. You're just kind of spicing the song up. So uh, I'll do it one more time with a totally different chord progression. I'll make it up here. Let's say it's, um, I don't know, uh, okay, C. G and F. You know, something simple. C, G. The more chord inversions you know, or chord voicings, the more interesting it's going to get. So a C. Let's find a, a cool C chord. Okay, so here's a, well, here's a basic C chord, E shape, right? That's the root and the major third. And then G. Uh, let's find a good G chord um, here. Let's see. And so I, well, F, right on. Is that my chord? F, right? So. Oh. on where those thirds are. So, 
Dave Matthews, uh, the beauty of his playing is taking chord progressions and breaking them down into their ones and threes mostly. So go have fun with this. This whole idea is just to get you just to go and discover more, um, uh, getting more inward on your chords. Like instead of saying a G, just really look in that G chord and, and trying to get a little bit deeper. Where are my thirds? Where are these root notes? And, and where are they in all these chord voicings? And how can I get them to sound a little bit better than just blatant uh, chord strumming. So I hope this all makes sense. It's just a, a, an enjoyable task for you to do. Take one of your songs, one of your creations, and put a Dave Matthews twist to it. Um, again, I'm on vacation, and so this is a quick little discussion that I was having with my friends. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back soon to the normal schedule as soon as I get back to my home. Rock and roll. Bye-bye.